Ça, c'est pas la boîte aux lettres la plus cool du monde, non Et ben, On est à Greenville, euh, en Caroline du Sud, aux états unis sur l'usine de balles TaylorMade, du jeu américain qui met de plus en plus l'accent sur le marché de la balle. C'est ultra secret là-dedans, on ne va pas pouvoir tout vous montrer. On a déjà pu rentrer une caméra et c'est déjà un exploit. Et avec une spécialisation, quelque chose qui marche de mieux en mieux dans le monde avec plus de 15% des ventes de balles, la balle de golf personnalisée avec votre numéro, votre logo et tout ça au pixel près avec un souci du détail et un souci de contrôle qualité poussé au maximum par la marque américaine. À l'intérieur, Kenny, l'un des dirigeants de l'usine, un ingénieur spécialisé dans la production de balles nous attend et vous allez le voir, c'est passionnant. This facility has been here for 10 years and we roughly in the neighborhood of 3 million dozen per year golf balls come out of this facility. So if you break that down, that's about 10,000 dozen a day. So Uh, have a lot of golf balls and they're really fast. So we're going to take you on the tour today. Um, hopefully you'll enjoy. So the first place we'll go is really the, the beginning of the process, which is the mantle cool room. We like to call that the nursery. Yeah, so the, the mantle production's in Asia. All of that's done. And when, when we receive it in Liberty, there's some inspection processes that happen. And then there's some coating that goes on. And it is exactly where we want it when we move that into the molding line. Yeah. Because at that point, we're going to change the state and you're going to add that layer of urethane, right? We're sitting here right now. At, that room is at 56.8 degrees Fahrenheit. And our humidity is at 38%. Okay. And we have data loggers that are continuously monitoring that. So there's, there's three colors, different colors on that mantle because each one of those is a different product. You'll see the tool response, the TP5 and the TP5X. This is the most advanced urethane molding line that exists in the world. The machine alone, this one alone, can produce approximately 90,000 dozen every month. It takes about 15 minutes to make a golf ball. Cast urethane is more difficult. It's harder to make. It, it, it costs more. But it also builds and makes the best ball in the world. He was talking about how thin we can get that cover. You can't do that with injection molding. But with cast urethane, I can get that covered down into the thousand. And that's where those attributes are different, you know, from driver and, and, and three or four iron. Yeah. I'm seeing a certain spin, but I can also get a different spin out of a wedge yeah. with the exact same ball. And there's, you know, there's 30 different attributes that we're looking at for the product as well, just yeah. on that line. Yeah. And it could be as simple as weight all the way up to temperature, insert pressure. There's all these things that we do. Mm -hmm from our QMS standpoint, our quality management system, to yeah. ensure that by process we produce the best ball we can. So we've taken a mantle, we've got it in a course yep. where we want, we've put the urethane cover on, we've you know, taken them out, out of the mold. Because in the process of doing cast urethane, the ball is somewhat porous, right that cover. There's yep. some things that we need to do and prep it for the next phase. So, So what we're looking at is a multi-head, highly efficient pad print machine that stamps that ball. Now what I'm doing is I'm turning that ball multiple times. If you look at a fix ball, all of those emblems that are on the ball are the exact same place every ball that we make. That's where technology comes in so that I'm, I've located that ball where I want it. Now I turn it exactly a number of degrees and I stamp. I turn it exactly the number of degrees and I stamp again because you want that to be uniform. So if, if I take that fixed diagram or that emblem, if you will, and I break that down, there's yeah. intricate pieces and parts in it, and there's also different colors. So in pad print technology, I have to go over, pick up the orange ink, right. come over and put the orange ink precisely on that yeah. ball. Then I've got to go to the next station, pick up black ink, do the same thing. So it's almost putting together the puzzle, right? right. When, we, when we started down the venture of continuous improvement several years ago, it could take up to eight to 10 hours to do a machine changeover. And so you're not nimble, you're not flexible. So through different SMED programs, which is single minute exchange of dye, our continuous improvement team has whittled that down to about an hour to an hour and a half. Now, regardez les PIX, les nouvelles PIX de 2024 qui sont prêtes en être envoyé au packaging, on a envie de plonger dedans.
it is very, very dependent on every detail. You know, think about what we've talked about today. We've talked about weight, compression, size, temperature, humidity, getting that repeatability, reliability. Programs like MySymbol, those things that separate us from the rest of the world. So if you've got a favorite number, you can get a favorite number. If you like avocado, you can get that on a ball. And it's, that's just the beginning. Allez, maintenant, interview dans l'usine avec Mike Fox, l'un des cerveaux de Télormède qui est dans la, dans la boîte depuis plus de 18 ans. Il a vu le, le marché complètement se modifier, les méthodes de production changer et des centaines de millions de dollars investis ici par Télormède dans cette usine. These machines cost millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. And that doesn't even include the amount of work that's going in and the advanced development and the research and the aerodynamics side and the chemistry side to produce materials that has a 10 year road up map. For me, at least when I was first here, I couldn't believe they don't cost more. We've grown our supply chain two, three, four, five X over the last few years. The market shifted. Golfers aren't just looking for golf balls that are white. This factory particularly will make way more visual technology products than we will make white products. So if we don't have a flexible factory that allows us to automate visual tech and customize your golf ball as efficiently as we do white product, you're not going to want to pay twice the price for those type of golf balls. For us to produce picks, stripe, ink golf balls, in essence the same price as we do white product, and while they're high manufacturing output machines, It's still an incredibly complicated, expensive process to make sure every golf ball you get is as fast as we can possibly make it and is as good as we can possibly make it. Designing visual technology equipment is as complicated as almost anything we do here in the golf ball development process. The precision that it takes to make a visual tech product, rotate a product 18 times and still hitting a spot on that golf ball with inside a a tenth of a fraction of an inch to make sure you're hitting the exact same spot to complete an image it takes precision that really hadn't existed before in the category. But then beyond that, how we've evolved that into the digital space. A leader, we're shooting out and controlling ink at a trillionth of a leader that we call a picoliter. So to be able to have that type of control over your image at that level of ink dispersion, again, takes precision that hasn't existed in print technology before we created it. Voilà, c'est terminé pour cette visite de l'usine. Comme je vous l'ai dit, on n'a même pas pu vous montrer le quart des machines, le quart du savoir-faire qui est déployé par TaylorMade pour développer sa puissance sur le marché des balles. Mais quand vous vous demandez pourquoi une douzaine de balles de haut niveau coûte plus de 55 euros, et ben voilà, vous avez en partie la réponse. C'est pour le contrôle qualité, la précision de la production et toutes les machines ont été créées spécialement pour TaylorMade pour développer leur balle de quel que soit le niveau et notamment développer la personnalisation de balle qui est la tendance de cette année et des années à venir sur le marché de la balle.